Hello, fellow Space Arena connoisseurs. Mm, yes, did you notice my new setup? State of the art, I know. I got bored with the old, boring PNG images for the background of every one of my videos, so thought I might as well try this. <laughs> totally not copying from High Boy, though. Yes, fantastic. Okay, so, the devs. Yes, those mystical ascended beings that think it's a blessing when they grace you with their precious limited time. And Space Arena, of course, has those too. And like all devs, they're a bit disconnected. Now, don't get me started on the 50 million cap and the fake release dates, but what I'm focused on is how they can improve the game and the community. Now, the first thing they could improve is a simple one. Fix the limit breaking system. The community has been begging for this system to be worked for years and years, yet nothing has been done about it. Smart TJ puts it best. I do truly love spending days of grinding, hundreds of Celestium on skips, just for the joy of waiting two seconds to see a little red hexagon over and over again. This is truly great game design. I couldn't agree with you more, bud. The fix to this is quite simple. So each time you try to limit break and you fail, the success chance goes up 5%. Now, the amount of resources it will take, will, it will still be a lot, millions and millions of credits and limit breakers, but it won't be so incredibly, impossibly expensive that it is unattainable. So the next thing I think the devs should change is who they offer ship bundles to. So when new players are getting into the game and they buy a $14 Achilles pack or $5 Centurion pack or whatever else the devs offer them, or like an example recently they offered a $5 Galactic Carrier Trial Ship, um, they don't even, the, these new players, they don't even know how to upgrade weapons, let alone build with ships of this magnitude. So this causes a massive problem. You have a bunch of new players with this super overpowered ship that they just bought. So then they go into b battles with it, and they're facing what, little tiny corvettes, cruisers, maybe some battleships. So they win over and over and over, and they get win streaks, 50 win streak. And then they, they rank up so fast, and they get to 1,000, 2,000 ranks, and then they hit a brick, a wall, where they're facing people who have been playing the game for months, maybe even years, who have more building experience than them, and then they can't beat these higher level ships because they have better weapons, better builds than them, and then the player gets stuck. They're at such a high level that they cannot beat those players using skill because they don't have any. They got to this level in a day from a pack that they just bought, and they're so high up they can't do anything, so they come to Discord, I see it all the time. Hey guys, I'm facing these ships I can't beat, what do I do? Everyone says, do not win a streak is the worst thing you can do. But they are put in this position by the developers. Okay, why are the developers offering people who have been playing the game for maybe a day end game ship ships that take months, to, maybe even a year to get to, to these new, new players? Okay, it happened to me, actually. Okay, I bought the Molnir, and I played so many games and won so many games, I got to a point where... How's a Molnir you're gonna beat a maxed out scent? So it's just creating a really, really terrible environment for these new players, thinking that they just got this ship. Oh, this is gonna be all great. And then they face this big giant wall of, oh, crap, I can't progress. So I've been going on a little bit, but I think the devs sh should have level caps on the offers that they show people. So I don't think someone at level five should be getting an offer for a, for a maxed out Achilles, okay? It's just gonna ruin the game and break their account. So just putting a cap on these these things, like you have to be at least level 50 to get these Galactic Carrier packs or these trials trial ship packs. So I think that I could definitely remove that, oh, that just game ruining experience. Now, the next thing I'm gonna talk about, it's quite simple. It's not a big giant thing that I need a whole section on. It's you should bring back blueprint selling. It's not some big giant game ruining feature that you had to get rid of. It's not hurting anyone, okay? I don't know what I'm supposed to do with 2,000 light fighter blueprints when my ship's already maxed out, okay? Just, if you bring it back, it'd make a lot of people happy and we've been asking for it for a while. Now, another change the dev could make to the games 
that would really just be a quality of life improvement on the game is confirmation. Like when you are after a ship battle, this is the most prevalent example of the need of a confirmation button. Okay? You you place that 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 big screen after the ship battle's over with the what is sometimes it's ten, sometimes it's fifty celestium for an extra battle, and people accidentally click that constantly. Okay, and there's no confirmation, and boom, 50 Celestium down the drain. And it's even worse with hangar slots. I don't know about you guys, but if I'm going to click the battle button, that little, little, like, grid with the, the hangar slots at the bottom is there. And that button to buy a new hangar slot for thousands of Celestium is right by it. And I've accidentally wasted thousands of Celestium by clicking that. So just a confirmation button for those features would be really, really helpful. Now, the last change I would recommend isn't necessarily in-game, it's just in the community as a general. So the developers, I only know of one, his name is Surge, there's a lot of different Surge, I don't know how you pronounce that, S-E-R-J, but they just need to, when they communicate, they need to be either honest or not set specific dates or things that they cannot hold up on. Okay, there's tons of examples of this, okay, they set a date, yeah, update's happening on this day nothing comes and then they get super mad when people are like where's the update okay just communication is necessary for these things okay if an update is being delayed tell us okay when we get mad it is not we have repeat this when i say we i mean the community okay mainly on discord because that's where we all talk and stuff okay we are not mad that you are not a working hard enough b that the update isn't coming out like the time we're not being impatient about the actual content it's the lack of communication okay when you as a professional game developer send set a date for an update or a feature to come out and you do not follow through on that it is your responsibility okay it's your responsibility to tell us just to say hey this is being delayed you're gonna have to wait a bit okay we're not gonna get mad about that at least I'm not okay whenever I get mad about this stuff it's not the actual content okay it's the communication so actually communicating with us taking five minutes just to write up a little thing like hey we have delays or this or that would really help the community see you in a better light because right now Whenever there's going to be a new feature, you're like, oh, this, or like, oh, what year is it going to be in? Okay, that's not a healthy community, like, that's not good for the community to see their developers in that light, okay? Just simply communicating what is going to happen with the game that we all love and not treating us like garbage. Okay, that's a bit extreme, but it feels that way sometimes when you get mad at us for pointing out this stuff, okay? Just communicate more. Okay, you got your community managers to do it, you know, the other Surge, he's great, okay, he's doing the best he can. You as a developer have to step up or get someone to step up and speak for you if you do not want to. Okay, we have full-blown riots when an update release date isn't met. There's stealth changes to the game, like dude, 50 million credit cap out of left field, like what the heck, <laughs> what? You, you, you can sneak little changes in here or there, but that was, yeah, I don't know what you were thinking there, okay? Have a change log, okay? This is part of the communication factor. Have, I don't, okay, I don't know a game in existence, okay? Even little Bitcoin clicker $2 game on my iPhone has a change log. Add a change log whenever you update the game so we know what is being changed, okay? I, you don't want to go into the game and see that half of your, your credits are gone because magical dev up in who knows where just up and decide to half all your credits for no reason. Or, oh, this weapon, Doomsday Laser or Fusion Ray, whatever you're investing millions of credits into, just all of a sudden, snap of the fingers, boom, completely irrelevant, can't even play with it, okay? A change log or informing us that, hey, we're going to make this weapon unusable like the doomsday laser is now somewhat it, it, it varies between cases but just telling us these changes in the game before they happen or at least having a change log in the game when they happen would really 
really help us out. Okay, I don't want to have to go on a witch hunt every time there's an update for the game and try to find out what's going on or the prices increase, decrease, this or that. It's just Delta be quiet. <laughs> Sorry, my cat's freaking out. It's just a really unnecessary thing that the community has to do that you should do for us. Okay, just write up a change log before each update and it would really help us out. And if you don't believe me yet, here's a list of features they said they were going to add but never did. Maybe my standards are a bit too high for a mobile game. These guys, they seem pretty organized when they want to be, and I think they could definitely make these small changes, okay? They're not crazy asks, okay? They would really help the game be way better than it already is. Yeah, that video is a bit ranty, but, you know, it was nice to get my point across. If you listen to the end, uh, thank you for supporting the channel a lot, and I'll see you all in the next one. Later.